Hey, what's up, Reefers? Super excited because tomorrow we are gonna drive up to Canada. Along the way, we are actually gonna bring one of the Bahama Llamas Whipping Willow Frag International Frag Swap. It sounds crazy. I'm gonna bring this into Canada. I'm gonna bring something back as well. And with one last look of the tank, which is, again, seems to be really happy this week, which is awesome. I guess I'll see you guys in Canada. Guys, a Canada trip is off to a rough start. Emily spent half an hour trying to find certain jewelry she could not find. She's frustrated right now. Mommy, I'm open. No, I couldn't find some of my jewelry that you hide. Here's our first stop, Tesla charging. What's in there? Pasta. Pasta, it's a little mac and cheese. Really looking forward to it. We got some waffle chicken. Huh? One more stop after one hour of driving. I think now is a long stretch where we go straight to Niagara Falls. Six hours later. The reason I'm filming is because like you see early in this video, we're gonna try to bring a coral frag, namely the Bahama Lamas Weeping Willow across legally. Bahama Lamas Weeping Willow. Bahama. Look over here, we, we're crossing the Friendship Bridge. We're gonna do a porch drop off and pick up. International Frag Swap. I see you. Ocean. We're heading across the Friendship ocean. Bridge. Ocean. Neon seas and ocean. Excellence. We're waiting in line right now. I've done as much paperwork as I could. The information of importing soft coral specifically into Canada is sketchy at best online. In the US it's quite clear and that's taken care of. But going to Canada, we'll see if the paperwork that I've done is enough. But for the most part, it sounds like it's up to the mood of the agent that we talked to and I just have to smile and be on my best behavior. But of course, we wanna make sure we do this legally uh, because we're a global citizen, right? <laughs> okay, that's kind of that's kind of cheese. Of course, we can trace a lineage this way as well. Be like, okay, at this point in time, well, which way are you going? Let's go straight. We can also proudly say that at this point on this day, in the Pulpit Reefer transported this particular strand of corals into Canada, and it started there. So it's not going to be like, oh, where did this pop out from? I don't know. So we can actually trace this to uh, Jim, who picked it up from St. Louis from Bahama Lama at one point. So I thought that's really cool too. Look at this. Bahama Lama. Bahama Lama, Remy. I haven't seen Lama Lama. Red pajama. Oh, I know that, but we'll see you on the other side, hopefully. Or if this fails, they're just gonna collect this and burn this. Nice. I wanna see that. All right, while we're waiting in line, basically I printed this out. IID, there's not much information on there. Basically just um, what the agent can look up in terms of the classification and stuff. Unfortunately, it does not have a special section for corals. So it just kind of like other, other, other. But again, there's a lot of people here and the line is moving quite fast. So I think they're just in a rush to get people through. So hopefully they'll just be like, okay, good to go. Here we go. Fingers crossed, seriously, toes crossed too. Made it through, no problem. They didn't even care. He didn't even care. Yeah, he just, he's just like anything to declare. I was like, yeah, soft coral as a, as a to, for a friend here as exchange. He's like, what else? I'm like, okay. But dude, I think dude was having a bad day for reals. He was just like, whatever, let's just go. I'm like, all right. He didn't even want to see the paperwork. Never asked for the paperwork. I made it like a really grand thing too. Yeah, I have something to declare. I have a soft coral for a friend. He was like, what else? Do you have any gun? Like, <laughs> no, no gun. But I look like I have gun. And it's like. Have a good day. <laughs> Having a bad day, still being nice. All right, I guess it's off to drop off the frag. This is the theme of this trip. Always charging, but check out this uh, Macom's charging station. Across the street, there's another bank as well. So it's, uh, it's a big station. So we successfully drop off the coral and on Monday, before we cross the border back into the US, we're gonna pick up some corals as well. It's to try our hand to bring corals from the Canada to the US via car. And that one, I'm a little bit more comfortable because I have all the document ready to go and got the okay. So we'll fast forward and we'll see what happens. It's all pretend 
Here we go, time to return trip, and we're picking these two corals. Big L, love them. Marsh, can you tell us a little bit about these corals? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So there's a Palau Nephthia. It's been around for maybe 20 years in the hobby. Um, I've seen it in aquariums for roughly that time, so it's really interesting to you know, have this in my tank and now to give it to you and you can bring it Thank into you. America, right? It's really only been, as far as I know, like this strain in Canada is sort of like in the reefing scene in Canada, so yeah, bring it to the States is cool. It's a really neon green coral, grows really fast. Um, and you can't really get it now, right? Due to the Yeah, you can. Like there's all these sort of, uh, I don't know if it's a myth in the hobby, but uh, there's, there's there were rumors that it was hard to get this coral. Got thing. it. Like something wiped them out in the ocean. Ah, I see. Like All right, well, I'll be honored yeah. to get a piece of these. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then we have the weeping willow. Oh, wow, willow, that's the, a big chunk. Thank the you. The big chunk of the this. Japanese weeping willow. Um, yeah, it uh, actually weeps in my tank, so when the flow's off, it, you know, the polyps fold over the crown, so. I have this Instagram down here, yeah. and just amazing, amazing videos of the whipping willows. Yeah. How, is there certain tricks to get the tentacles to be that long? Um, I'd say randomized flow, like I use the Ecotech pump, so yeah. on reef crest they have that really random mode, so I think that really helps, right? Do they like um, the higher flow or? Lower flow. Um, I'd say higher flow. We can handle quite a bit of flow. As long as it's not direct, like if you have an AC pump, it might not work. But if you yeah. can program the pump, it, uh, you can give it a lot of flow, almost like an SPS core. How about light wise? Um, higher light, I'd say higher light. Higher light? Yeah, medium to high light. I don't think that matters too much with the polyp length. I think it's more of the flow. Got it. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think that's a mystery. Like everyone's like, how yeah, do I get the you, top? Yeah, but yeah. there is a only some corals can you know ever get that long haul of length, right? You should see the stock should be like a like needles almost. Like you'll see when you take it home. Once you have one, you'll know. You'll be able to tell. I mean, you yeah, already the, know. Right. Like in the picture, we know the genetics there. Yeah. We know it's capable of that. So yeah. if it does not weep, it's my fault. <laughs> uh, no, All right. Well, thank you so much. No I'll give you a fist bump yeah. real quick. All right, here we are, Rainbow Bridge, about to cross into the border of the U.S. The U.S. flag at half staff because it's um, Memorial Day. Thank you for all those who served and sacrificed. Um, in terms of crossing the border with things that needs inspection, that presents its own issue because the inspection station is not open today. I was lucky because I was able to chat with um, an inspector agent before this and got the form ready. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The inspection station has certain hours and certain days that they are only open that. We got forms in hand with the corals in hand. As you can see, the line is long. Although it's moving, but the line is long. But hopefully this also translates to things to progress a little bit faster. Um, yeah, we're feverishly trying to finish all these food right now before crossing into the border. So fun times. Wife's annoyed because the agents just kind of wave us through, but I, I said, I have something to declare. And then that's when we get pulled over his side and I explain what is a soft coral and uh, et cetera. Because like most of the people are off today due to uh, being a uh, Memorial Day. Uh, so I was here explaining a little bit, pull out the corals, gave a quick like background on it and stuff. I'm like, oh, not many soft corals come through here. So now he's going in to make sure the agent I spoke to is the actual person that actually worked here and just verify some info and that should be good. But again, after a uh, long delay on the bridge, I guess this is the last thing. <laughs> but I just want to make sure we do this right. I don't want to just kind of drive it in and make sure whatever documentation works so people can reproduce this. And so far, it seems okay. Except for, except for the delay, of course. Of course. I'll give you a nice massage afterwards, okay? I wish to be letting you angry. No. <laughs> Many unbearable hours later. We finally made it home. It's like 3.30 a.m. right now. I don't want to wake up a neighbor, so I'm whispering. Oh my gosh, this was a long trip. Good morning, Reverse. Last night was rough, rough, rough. When we got home, it was around 3.30, and I was so tired that I just kind of dump the bags and float them in the sun and take care of them uh, today. And now, let's see, this is uh, the next day morning. I just want to take a quick peek at the tank as well. Nothing died. I'm most concerned about the Walt Disney because usually uh, that would be the first to go. It's so tenuous, it's so touchy, my tank. But first glance, the oh, whipping willow fell off. This is a coral, is it the coral nursery? I got from, uh, from Lynn. That's their version of the whipping willow. 
so it had been sitting in the back of his tank and moved it to the frag rack, but it looks like something knocked it down. And it's, it somehow landed upright, which is kind of cool. And here's the Bahama Lama whipping below as well. Uh, but first thing first, let me get her settled. Yeah, you. And then I'm gonna go ahead and situate the frags from Josh. And it sounds like they can come in. Two days later. Ladies and gentlemen, now that I've had a few days to recover from the long drive back from Toronto, I made the mistake of driving at night through the Pennsylvania mountain mountain road. It was, it was, <laughs> it was painful because I kept falling asleep. But here it is. Let's take a closer look to the corals that were brought back thanks to the generous Josh. First up, we have the Whipping Willow. This is a Japanese Weeping Willow. There are a couple versions out floating out there, but just based on the photos and videos that Josh shared on his Instagram, this one has potential. Just look at how tightly packed the tentacles are and how thin the tentacles are compared to some of the other uh, willows that I have. Uh, the one in the back is the, um, the coral nursery uh, version of weeping willows and I think to the left is also a version of the Japanese um, green weeping willow if I remember correctly and up front we have the Bahama Lamas weeping willow. If you check out Josh's Instagram you actually see videos of how this weeping willow looked before it was fragged. The crown got uh, cut off and chopped up I believe and I got the stock and it is recovering. It's kind of similar to if you look back there that's the Bahama, uh, Bahama Lamas Weeping Willow, you notice that I cut off the ring, a ring around the, uh, the crown and the polyps are just coming back right now. That's what it looks like over here as well. I'm really looking forward to see how this one develops. So far it seems to like the uh, uh, lighting arrangement as well as the flow, but just like Josh said, it seems like the lighting is not as important as the amount of flow that this coral will be getting. The second coral that I brought back from Canada, uh, thanks to Josh, is this guy right here. This is a Palau Nithias. Now Palau, it's in the uh, Philippines, as you know, um, I think they have banned exports of corals. P please correct me if I'm wrong. But for whatever reason, you don't see this one in the hobby as much anymore. However, I do think that this looks quite similar to the uh, green nithias that I have in the um, seven gallon mangrove tank upstairs, but I'm not sure if they're the same thing. So I'll be really interested to see when it grows up, what it looks like in my system, and then we can kind of compare it as well. Regardless, there's a super cool softy, and I always love coral with a, with a story behind it. It's interesting because sometimes like when you just look at the tank, you can almost immediately tell whether things are on point, are things happy or something is wrong. And at this point in time, knock on wood, everything seems to be really happy and just growing well. Uh, my biggest worry was the Walt Disney Tenuous I got from Box Reef because once again, Tenuous just does not seem to like changes in my tank. And thankfully, it is doing well and is situated all the way at the top of the tank. And all the other SPS like the Firecracker, like the Bill Murray, um, and also the Goth Bonsai all the way in the back wall right there, uh, allowing its space to shoot up. They all seem to be slowly adjusting to the tank. None of them really browned out yet. I think maybe the Walt Disney browned out slightly, but everything seems to be just chugging along, which is excellent. And no issue with any of the torches. I was uh, keeping an eye out on Euphilia eating flat worms, but everything seemed perfectly happy. The last time I did was about two weeks ago. So I think this uh, this week I'm gonna start the regiment one more time. I'm gonna dip it maybe two or three more times and then just call it a day because nothing nothing ever since the first two dips ever come out again. So hopefully that's uh, already behind us. And look at, dude, look at this elegance. This is the baby elegance. This is interesting. Uh, Telegram, my brief sensei has the big chunk, the mother colony, and then one day just drop a polyp on the sand bed with a little bit of skeleton. And from there it started growing and he, and he gave it to me, so. This is an awesome piece as well with an excellent story. In the back, of course, we have the Euphilia Gardens and uh, it's doing excellent, things are happy. We got the ACI King Hammer, we got the Prince of Darkness, we got a Rainbow Hammer that I got from Lynn. So there's actually a side story that I did not really talk about. This wall hammer right here actually started getting brown jelly disease on either end of the skeleton for whatever reason uh, last month. And as a Hail Mary, I just did the uh, KFC dip and within one day, the brown jelly stopped. And for the last two weeks or so, it has just been slowly recovering. You can see some of the tentacles started coming coming back to the uh, skeleton again. It's a little bit bleached out, but then it is uh, it is expanding, which is excellent. 
So this is something that's um, that's absolutely amazing and mind blowing to me. In the past, whenever Euphilius or from Vigelius or whatever hammer, frog spawn you want to call them these days, whenever it starts showing brown jelly, it's a death sentence. That head usually is gone by the end of the day. But once I've done the antibiotic dips, it stopped and then I continued to dip for three more days and then it's just on the road recovery. This is a total game changer. And yes, I also fragged the uh, yellow Fiji letter. That's why you have you see like this guy right here and a couple baskets. All right, so a more concise recap of what's needed in terms of bringing corals to Canada and also bring coral back into the US. First, let's talk about bringing coral to Canada. Based on my finding, it seems that soft coral into Canada is unregulated. I went through the air system. Basically, that's their automatic import export declaration form. It's a automatic drill down system so that you can find the exact code you need to declare what you're bringing in. I could not find coral. The best I could do is basically like live animals, aquatic animals and then other, other, and it gives me a string of codes. So I printed out a paper, took it with me, uh, to cross the border and just like you saw in the video the agent did not even want to see the coral they did not even need to see the paperwork i i really specifically said that i'm bringing corals in soft corals and he just kind of waved me through and from talking to others who have done this it sounds like that is a norm basically going to canada if you have soft corals they don't really care keep in mind though this is by driving from new york through buffalo and uh through the niagara fall port of entry so if you're flying maybe things will be a little bit different the main concern is the amount of water they allow you to take on the flight that part i'm not sure because when flying domestically in the u.s the water level restriction is waived if they can see that you're transporting a live animal inside a quantity of water meaning that if i bring fish or bring corals through um, on an airplane right if they see fish swimming around they see things can live in the liquid that means that the liquid is not explosive anything dangerous so they no longer have that volume restriction but again this is flying within the US when you fly international into Canada it may be a little bit different so it's best to double check with the custom or the airline now on to bringing corals back into the US from Canada. That's when things got a little bit more complicated. There's a really specific form that you need to fill out, but the good thing is that they do have online version now and I have a link down here. Same deal as Canada, soft coral is not really regulated like Canada. Uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is that you do need to declare them and you do have to find the actual genus. You don't need the species level, but you do need the genus level and you have to be able to search for it in the database and put it in exactly how it shows on the form. There were also a couple things on the form that I was kind of not sure how to fill out. For example, like where's the inspection station, etc. But I was lucky because this whole time I was just chatting an email with a wildlife inspector based in the US. She or he was able to help me pick the proper uh, answer for each of these fields. And again, like I mentioned, the Fish and Wildlife in the US is really responsive. I sent a general email to the Fish and Wildlife headquarters first and then the Fish and Wildlife headquarters kind of forwarded my email to the appropriate port of entry. So I was actually talking to an inspector that actually works out of Buffalo, the Niagara for port of entry. And after I finished filling out the form, the inspector actually offered me the choice to get the uh, corals virtually approved first uh, instead of doing it the day off, simply because the inspection center is actually closed that day since it's Memorial Day and it's a uh, uh, federal holiday. So of course I jumped at the chance, uh, so sent some pictures over. She or he approved it, gave the stamp, scanned the document, sent it back. I'm not sure if this virtual pre-approval is a normal thing, but it never hurt to ask. Once again, shoot them an email, they're super responsive. And then just like you saw earlier in this video, during the actual border crossing a day off, the agent did not even ask me if I'm bringing anything in. Normally they'll ask like, are you bringing anything in that's like gun, tobacco, blah, blah, blah. But I guess maybe it was so busy that he didn't even care. Just like, yeah, just go, just go. And I had to actually pull out the paper and say, hey, I want to declare something because I really want to see if the paperwork is legit and that's everything we need in, in order to bring corals in. And thankfully that form was exactly what we need to bring soft coral in. One really interesting thing is that I was really careful in terms of bringing rock in because I understand that live rock is a huge no-no, right? So I specifically told the inspector that I'll make sure the coral is off any rock. It'll be attached to uh, either a free floating or like attached to a ceramic plug. But she actually said that it's actually not an issue if the coral is attached to a rock. It's a live rock that 
that they're concerned about. So I'm not sure of how they determine the difference between like a, if the core is attached to a larger piece of rock, is it considered a live rock? Or is it just like a specific, just a piece of rock with no coral that we cannot bring in? That specific part, I'm not sure. So if you're bringing in a coral that may be attached to a larger piece of rock, I think the best thing to do is just double check what is the actual definition of a live rock. And if the coral is coming in on a rock, is it okay? So overall, the process of bringing corals into the US was super smooth. Even though there's form to fill out, there's no fee involved and everybody is really willing to help and really, really quickly to respond to email messages as well. Don't try to call them and leave a message because um, I did that as well. It took them three or four days to call me back. And at that, at that time, I already kind of finished the whole process um, online already. Taking coral into the Canada, technically it's um, way easier because they hardly even check. They don't even care, I think. However, it's a little bit nerve wracking simply because there's not much information in terms of like what's allowed, what documentation I need. Uh, so I did the best I could, but again, you, they did not ask for anything. So I guess that's a good thing. So all in all, I think it is a fantastic experience and and I think um, I will be down to kind of do more swaps with our fantastic Canadian neighbors. Um, in fact, my wife is actually pitching me the idea of moving to Toronto because she loves the food and the people there so much. So who knows, maybe in the future I'll become a Canadian vlogger. <laughs> Life work in mysterious ways.